Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to make three points and I would like to discuss very briefly three questions. The first one is what is actually the, the problem and what kind of vision do we need? And the starting point, if we talk about the global challenges, is obvious, and I agree completely with Simon, because he said and emphasized that we are confronted now with transnational problems. And I would emphasize even more that I think that we are at the starting, at the beginning of an acceleration of globalization. We are talking about the crisis of globalization, but it will move forward. If we think about diseases, financial markets, climate change issues, all these kind of things imply that globalization is moving forward. And all our European nation states are in the global context, small and medium actors. And we can only make a difference in terms of shaping globalization and building a fair and inclusive globalization as a European community. This is my first and most important point. And this implies that we need a vision of our role as Europe in the world, and we need an idea and a discussion in Europe about our model to reorganize the globalized world. So this is the first point. We need to come together, we need to work together in order to make a difference because the problems are big, they are transnational, and we as nation states are very small actors in this globalized world with new actors around. Have in mind China, have in mind the power shifts toward Asia. So this is the first point. The second point is uh, why do we need to reform our European development policy? I think it's simple to answer that because the, the, the approach that we do have currently, the 27 plus one approach, we have 27 development policies from 27 member states, and then we have the European Community uh, Development Policy, so this is the 27 plus one approach, and this is not working. It is very expensive, it is not very coherent, and the impacts of our policies, this, this additional addition of 27 plus one development policies, does not have an impact that we would like to see. So we need to bring our forces together, we need to work much more coherently, we need to have joint targets, we need to think much more radically in terms of division of labor. I will give you a very simple example, and all, you all that are, you are working in this field know these kind of examples. Look towards Tanzania, look towards Burkina Faso, look towards any sector, health or education, and you will see in Tanzania in the health sector 12 European member states doing something. Do you think that this is very effective? I don't think so. If I try to convince our parliamentarians in Germany regarding this kind of issue, I call it the big number problem. We have too many actors in small sectors in the, our developing, uh, developing country partner uh, settings. And I always argue with my parliamentarians in Germany that have in mind that we would need to reorganize our health system. And we would need to work with 25 international donors from around the world to reorganize our health system. This would not work. You would ask for two partners or three, maybe four, but not for 24 or 44. And this is the reality. And we as Europeans can make a big difference because 70% of the bilateral donors are Europeans. So we can, make, we can change that. We have to organize division of labor, complementarity and work together. This is my second point, a very simple one bringing transaction costs down and making our work much more uh, effective and organize a much more big impact in working together. Then the third point, uh, Simon asks us how to make all these kind of things happen. What do we need? And I would um, make two points here, how to make it happen. The first point is that I completely agree that we need much more multilateralism because we are confronted with global and cross-border and transnational problems, so we will not find bilateral answers to these kind of transnational threats. So multilateralism will gain uh, importance. But we need reforms of our organizations on the multilateral level, because we all know on the, in the United Nations we need many reforms to make development cooperation, for example, much more effective. But also on the level of the European Union, and Martin talked exactly about that, we know that the, the, the way we are organized and the way our structures and institutions are working, is, this is not very effective. 
We need to rethink that. And you made the concrete points that we discussed yesterday. We need a strong development commissioner. We need a strong development commissioner who is able and capable to work together with a new high representative responsible for foreign relations in a, in a much more wider sense. And the interaction between both and others is essential. And for that, we need institutional reforms. And we are going to make these uh, institutional reforms during the next months. And this is why it is so important to build these kind of groups and networks now to influence how we are going to reorganize our setting in Europe. So in order to make all these kind of targets and objectives happen, we need institutional reforms. And the point here is now we need urgent reforms in Europe. They are on the way. We need to influence those. And the second thought regarding how to make it happen is about the multiplicity of policy, fields, arenas, and actors to shape global development in a broader sense. Martin has been talking about that too. You said that we have the, the poverty agenda, of course, and we have the development policy agenda in a more, in a, in a more narrow sense, to say so. But we have other arenas that are, that are interacting with poverty issues and that form part of the global development agenda. I only name three or four. We have the poverty thing, development policy. We do have the climate agenda, of course. And as we all know, the climate impacts are, are huge regarding policy implications for developing countries, huge. I'm sure that if we would not be, a, we would not be able to avoid dangerous climate change, we will never be able to, to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Never, ever. So climate change policies, and this is about negotiations, this is about ne Copenhagen, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Then there is a third very important arena for global development policies related to climate uh, change things. I'm sure that we will discuss after Copenhagen much more than now about innovation and technology and how, how to organize on the international level innovation processes and technological efforts to reorganize the energy basis of the whole global economy because we need to build a global low carbon economy in order to avoid dangerous climate change. So we need to think about multilateral efforts in these arenas too. And this is linked again to climate change and to developing countries, of course, and poverty reduction. And then we have foreign, policy, foreign uh, policies and security policies. So what I, the point of this I, what I would like to make is that we need to learn to work together between these policies arenas. And we are still not very good in working between these uh, silos. We are working within our silos, but we need to bring this together. And this is also an issue for the European Union, of course, and this is why we discussed yesterday so, so uh, intensively how to make these kind of interactions between the differ different arenas of shaping the global development agenda happen. So these has been my three points, my three questions, and some answers. Thank you very much. Very Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, we're going to give you to the end, so we'll have Richard next, please.